If that means that we're looking for when the second derivative is zero, well, let's go find that second derivative. So y prime, first derivative, is going to be x squared plus 10x, isn't it? So then the second derivative is going to be 2x plus what? 10. So my point of inflection or possible point of inflection, well, let's set this equal to 0, and we get 0 equals 2x plus 10. X is what? Negative 5. Negative 5. All right, now we've got to make sure this changes signs. And y'all, I wouldn't do a number line analysis here. Go back and look at the graph. Look at this information. This is back to Algebra 1 graphing lines, isn't it? So what we found, we have a line, right? Where does that line cross the x-axis? At negative 5. So you know you have a sign change there. You change from positive to a negative right there. So what should be the correct answer here? It should be D. Right, so for this one, what's going to happen if I plug in A? Because my limit, X is approaching A, isn't it? Good, because if I plug in A, notice that I get A squared minus A squared over A to the fourth minus a to the fourth. That's what that means. If x is approaching a, everywhere you see an x, we are subbing in that four to see kind of what's going on with this. Remember, our first line of defense with limits is to plug in, right? <coughs> but like y'all said, evaluating that, I get zero over zero. This is an indeterminate form, which means we need L'Hopital's rule. Ah, L'Hopital. What does L'Hopital tell us to do? Perfect. Derivative of the top over derivative of the bottom. Then go back and re-plug in. All right? So let's see what we can do with that then. If we go back and we do some kind of plugging in. Now, y'all, if this was free response, and I think last year it was free response, you have to show this step right here. You have to establish you have an indeterminate form. You have to state L'Hopital, which you can abbreviate L apostrophe H, and then go to your derivative. So then we have the limit as X approaches A, and then we have to find the derivative of the top well, what's the derivative of x squared? That's just 2x, and a is our number, our constant, right? So the derivative of any constant is, it's going to be 0 because it's constant. It doesn't have a rate of change, right? So a squared is going to go to 0 over what happens in the denominator. What's that going to change to? If we take the derivative of x to the fourth, 4x cubed, right? Y'all with me? All right, don't use the quotient rule here. This isn't the quotient rule situation. This is just going to be where we do the derivative of the top over derivative of the bottom. Is that okay so far? Any questions, please ask me. No? All right, so let's go ahead and simplify this, can't we? So we have the limit as x approaches a. And let's see, what's left in the numerator? Looks like a 1, isn't it? And in the denominator, we have 2x squared, right? And now let's plug in a. So you get 1 over 2a squared, right? Questions about it? All right, equation of a tangent line. Number three, we need, let's see, God, we've got our x and y, don't we? So we really just need to find the derivative. So let's see, what is y prime? y prime is going to be 1, isn't it? And then minus sine of x. Okay. We've got, good, we've got our derivative. We need to find our derivative at the point 0, 1, don't we? 
as we have our slope generator. So that's going to be 1 minus sine of 0. And this is where I think some people miss it because we forget sine of 0 is what? 0. What is cosine of 0? 1. We need to remember those. So let's see, we end up with our slope being 1, isn't it? So now let's go plug in. So we have y minus y1 equals our slope times x minus x1. And so here it looks like we're going to solve for y because that's just how the, our answer choices are written. That's why we're solving for y. And so we end up with what? y equals x plus 1, isn't it? So let's see, uh, what was the correct answer here, B? Yes. We have the graph of F. What do I know about F at 1? It's zero. it's 0, isn't it? Let's write that down. We know F at 1 is 0. Are we pretty confident of that? I'm pretty sure. Pretty sure that F at 1 is 0, right? We can make that statement confidently. All right, let's use our answer choices and say, well, what the heck about F double prime at one? What does F double prime talk about? Concavity, concavity. right? How is this concave? Is it up like a cup or down like a frown? Down, down. down like a frown. So what does that mean about the value of my second derivative? Negative. It is negative, so instead of equals, I need to put less than zero there, don't I? Ah, does that make sense? Okay, and they always ask these questions because it is connecting all of those concepts. What statement can I make about F prime at one? Well, what is happening, if, is that function, let's see, F prime talks about increasing and decreasing, right? So, let's see, F prime at 1, it looks like my function is increasing there, isn't it? It's moving upward, we're increasing. So, what would be true about all of those tangent lines at that point? Their slopes would be positive. If my function is increasing, then that first derivative is positive. Okay, looking at this, answer choice should be what? C, D. I heard C and D. Are this, is this from least to greatest? Yeah, because look, it's all less than, right? So the first one should be written would be the negative, wouldn't it? Because negative is bigger than zero. So then that chops out A, B, and C. What should be written next? D. There, so <laughs> D is the correct one. Awesome. Absolutely. So again, this is all falling back to derivatives. If F is increasing, then I know F prime is positive. So if we can identify where F prime is positive, then we therefore know where F is increasing. So let's look at F prime. That's going to be 4X cubed, isn't it? plus 2x. We're going to set this equal to 0. So I have 4x cubed plus 2x. We're going to factor out a 2x, aren't we? What's left on the inside? 2x squared, right? Plus 1, isn't it? Is that okay? Questions? All right, so let's see. 2x equals 0, or 2x squared plus 1 equals 0. So from here, 2x equals 0, we see that x has to be 0, doesn't it? What about this crap? We're going to get, let's see, 2x squared, isn't it? Equals negative 1. So x squared equals negative 1 half. Can I square a number and get a negative? No. If I square a number, what is it always? 
positive, always positive. So I'm not going to get a value there. So let's see, what answer choices could I probably start getting rid of? A, B, and E, right? Because you know the only value that you have a possibility is going to be zero. Now, how do I know what's going on on zero? We could graph this, couldn't we? Or we can do a number line. We have zero, right? Well, let's pick a point on the other side of zero. Let's pick negative one. Let me slide this over. So negative one, if I choose negative one and I plug in to this, it's my derivative, isn't it? So the outside's gonna be negative two times, what about if I plug in on the inside? Plug in on the inside, you get three. So what is that going to give us? Negative, right? So what about over on the other side? That should be a positive, shouldn't it? Let's look at over on the other side. So what can we choose here? Oh, what the heck? I did negative over there, didn't I? Negative 2 is not on that side of 0. 28 people and nobody told me that? Y'all, I'm on crack. Good gosh. All right, I want whatever crack y'all are on because y'all didn't catch it either. It's called sleep medicine. It's sleep medicine Oh, mine's called I took migraine medicine this morning. Y'all, so what happens on that side? Is that really negative? Doo-doo. That is a positive over there, folks. Yes, it is. All right, what's on the other side of zero? It's a negative on the other side because we just did it. Good gosh. So we're positive from zero all the way to the right. So what answer is that? It is C, isn't it? I am upset. What's the first line of defense with all limits? What are we going to do first? Plug in. Very few times does it ever work, but it's a great place to start. So my limit as h approaches 0, let's see, that's going to be e to the 0, right? Minus 1 over 2 times 0. So I get 1 minus 1 over 0, which I get 0 over 0. That's indeterminate. So what rule do I need here? L'Hopital's rule. So now let's go take our derivative. Derivative of the top over derivative of the bottom. So we're going to reevaluate my limit as h approaches 0. The derivative of the top, y'all, that's just like saying, what's the derivative of e to the x? e to the x. So derivative of e to the h is still e to the h. Derivative of 1 is 0 over, what's the derivative of 2h? 2. Now evaluate your limit. So e to the 0 is 1 over 2. So what answer is this? B. B. C is 1. Who the heck said C? All right. Uh, let's see. 60% got this, so that one's pretty good. I do want that percentage to be higher, though. Y'all look at this. What is this the graph of? F prime. Look at your answer choices. It's talking about relative min and relative max. All right, so right here. Is that a relative min or a relative max? What's the derivative doing? It's going from negative to positive. So is it a min or max? That's a min, isn't it? Is that not a min? 
All right, what about over here? We are going from a, all right, we're going from positive to negative. So that's a max. And what's this over here? That's another min. So what's the right answer choice here? It is A, isn't it? I was so close so far. All right, so what's your first line of defense? Plug in. Plug in. So let's plug in. So if we have the limit as X approaches 1, well, let's see. If we plug in here, we're going to get, well, X over natural log X. 1 over 0. Y'all, that's not indeterminate. What is indeterminate? Zero, zero over zero, zero, right? This is one over zero. This one doesn't exist. Oh That's a horizontal asymptote. No, sorry, vertical asymptote. That's a vertical asymptote. Doesn't exist. 